are talking the Jack in the Box Awakening. This is actually a sequel to the movie The Jack in the Box, as I actually did review on the channel, and I've got to say, I kind of liked it. However, you can actually watch this and without actually having to watch the first movie, so don't worry about that. It's directed by Lawrence Fowler, who also directed the first movie. Now, what's the story? It focuses on this antique Jack in the Box, which actually houses a demonic entity. And in this movie, it's actually purchased by an elderly, very wealthy woman who is coming towards the end of her life. And she wants to find ways to try and extend it. Now, the legend surrounding this particular kind of jack-in-the-box is that if you sacrifice six innocent souls to it, you'll essentially get a wish. And that's what she kind of wants to do. So she employs her snivelling mummy's boy son to try and help her with her scheme. And she has this kind of huge kind of stately home. There are a few staff that work there, a couple of maids, a chef, etc. So they're obviously uh, the kind of the prime targets. And anyone else who happens to be unlucky enough to go on the property may well be have a target on their back as well. So that's kind of your basic setup. Our point of view character is this kind of new girl who kind of applies for the job as a kind of a maiden within this house and she's our sort of entry level to this kind of situation. So that's all I'm going to say on the plot. Uh, what do I think works in this film? I actually did quite like the first movie, I have to say. I thought it was quite a well done, lower budget British horror film. And although I had a few issues with that, I actually think a lot of the issues they've actually addressed within this film. Let me talk about the Jack in the Box creature itself, because one of the things I did like with the original film that hasn't changed is the actual creature design is very impressive. The kind of the, the mime-like, clown-like sort of creature is just as scary and icky as he was in the, in the first one. And we actually do get a little bit of kind of backstory here to kind of to flesh out the world building a little bit, which I kind of appreciated. But I think they do a great job in the kind of the uh, the visuals with that kind of creature, uh, and also the kind of the way he's kind of like moving around in a kind of an unnatural sort of uh, way as well. One of the things I felt didn't quite work in the first movie, however, was the the, the, the kind of film surrounding the uh, this creature wasn't all that kind of scary or, or foreboding it was kind of somewhat overlit at times and i have to say they have improved with this film and i think part of the uh the, the, the kind of the scare factor here is kind of amped up with the fear of the unknown you don't quite know where this thing is all the time um and the, the movie does a kind of a better job of kind of gradually kind of building up to the kills and things like that with this you know you might hear it or you might see a kind of a shadow going past and you know, it sticks more to the kind of the shadows at this time, but you still see enough of it to be a fulfilling kind of uh, movie in regards to special effects. That is done to a better standard here. I have to say as well, I thought the movie had just an, a better all-round production feel. It feels a lot more polished and a higher production value than the initial movie. Uh, the movie is quite well paced, I have to say. It, uh, you know, you kind of get the the, you know, the kills peppered throughout the movie, and I always quite like the kind of the uh, the, the the mythology where we see people kind of get sucked into this kind of box, and you know, you wonder where they're going in. You know, what, what you wonder where these kind of bodies are going. There are a couple of quite effective jump scares. I know some people don't really like jump scares. I actually kind of quite enjoy them to be honest when they're done well and there is a couple of good ones here the location shooting is i think is excellent it's kind of this kind of stately manner um and you know it, it looks kind of very kind of lavish and has a it's not a it's not an old period film it's a contemporary film but nonetheless it still has a somewhat of a, an old worldly uh, kind of feel to it as the kind of the first one does as well and I, I really enjoyed the the addition of a kind of a human bad guy so to speak with this kind of um this guy who's like the uh, the put upon son for this kind of wealthy woman who is like a snivelling mummy's boy. But he is kind of, you know, we do see a little bit of, of depth in him. Initially, he's kind of very reluctant and kind of feels very guilty about what he's got to try and do to save his mother. But he kind of goes in this arc where he just kind of, you know, leans into it a little bit more and becomes a little bit more of an out and out kind of villainous character. That I thought was quite good. And I also quite like some of the supporting cast here. I thought the kind of the maid and the kind of this chef were, were quite good, and even our point of view character I think was fine here in regard to the acting. What well, doesn't work? Um, so I think some of the um, 
the decisions here, to particularly to have our, our our mother and son have American accents, wasn't the best. I, I understand why f British films do this. They want to appeal to American audiences. So they sometimes have uh, British actors speaking in an American accent. But I, I always think if you can't do it very well, you're better off just not doing it. And unfortunately, their kind of wobbly American accents do stand out a little bit uh, as kind of being a little bit variable, should we say, uh, through the movie. Um, to be fair, I think the main critique here is the plot is more or less the same as the first film. Uh, I do think it looks better in production wise, but ultimately it's a kind of uh, someone wanting to kind of get these six victims and, and you know, and it kind of plays pretty much the same as the first movie with a, a few minor tweaks, like I say, the human, uh, this mummy's boy and all that. But ultimately it's kind of the same plot, to be quite honest with you. Um, so it doesn't really become particularly uh, original, I have to say, even from the, its own movie. Um, so there's that. Uh, it's it, ultimately as well, I just think it becomes, even outside of, it's, it's really rehashing the, the original film. You know, you you have the typical kind of red shirts here that you know are going to die. And we have our typical kind of final girl. Um, and again, I, I would like to see some sometimes films change up this kind of formula a little bit and have maybe, you know, introduce someone who you think is going to be the final girl, but it ends up kind of being someone else and stuff like that. It, it kind of just seems somewhat kind of formulaic. I do think this movie is a slight improvement over the, over the first movie. Um, I don't think it does enough, quite enough, to kind of really uh, distinguish itself as a clever sort of story, but it's certainly a very serviceable and enjoyable film, albeit, I don't think, a particularly original one. If this series does continue further, I think they've got a better, uh, you know, a better balance here in regards to maybe the scares that are a little bit amped, but I would like to see a little bit more in regards to difference in, in, in terms of the kind of the story here. Um, you know, I just think you can't do this again and again and again. It just seems like it's practically the same plot. Uh, but overall, it's a very good film. And like I said, if you don't, if you haven't seen the the, the first one, you don't have to. And, and I think this one is actually just a, probably a slightly better movie, if I'm honest, in regards to uh, the design and things like this. Um, a few minor quibbles and stuff like that. But overall, it's a pretty good film. I'm going to give it a six point five. I think it is slightly kind of better. Uh, I know I don't have the graphic for a 6.5, but there you go. Uh, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.